What's going on YouTube? Bryce builds it all, your favorite AMPIA and part 147 instructor, uh, back with another video. It's been a little while since I've been on here. I've been trying to make videos. I know I haven't been very consistent. I apologize about that. But anyways, I wanted to make a video, kind of talk about some tips uh, to have a successful career, things that you should do if you're a mechanic just starting out, um, quail some concerns, if you will, all that kind of stuff. So if that kind of thing interests you, as always, stick around. Now, if this is your first video, I do a lot of videos that are aircraft related. Most of my videos are aircraft related, really, I should say. Uh, but I've done a lot of videos, practical project demonstrations for people getting ready to test for their AMP. Um, I've done a lot of videos on how to become an AMP, tips and tricks, things like that, things that suck for AMPs, and so on and so forth. But in this video, I uh, caught a moment, caught a little bit of a, a break here at work, and I want to step back here in the avionics lab and talk a little bit about things you can do uh, to ensure a successful career, especially if you're just starting out. So the number one thing that I'm going to say for you is, is this. Don't be afraid to tell people that you don't know. This is something that my students talk to me a lot about up here at the 147 school, but don't be afraid to say that you don't know or you're unsure about something. I know um, ego, it can be kind of a scary thing to say to someone when they ask you to do a task to tell them that you don't know how to do it or you're not sure what step to take first. So don't be afraid to tell your supervisors and the people around you that you don't know, that you're not sure how to do something and seek guidance from those around you that are more experienced. I've said this before, but the aircraft com mechanic community is an incredible community and our ultimate goal is safety. So nobody wants to see you doing something you're uncomfortable with or doing something you're not familiar with and getting that wrong and causing someone to get hurt or causing an accident, whatever it may be. So if you're unsure of something, look to those around you and try to get some guidance, tell people that you don't know, whatever it may be. Because nobody wants to be wrong and it's better to just stop and ask somebody for help if you're unsure about something. The next piece of advice that I'm going to give you kind of goes along with the first thing I said. I may change the wording of this. I'm actually recording this last, so I might move it further forward in the video uh, during editing, but that doesn't matter. But the next thing that I would say is don't be scared to go after different tasks or things that you haven't done before. Um, so I already said, if you don't know something, don't be afraid to say that you don't know, and that's fine. But don't be scared of things. Don't be fearful. Don't be the guy who's been a mechanic for 20 years and is like, oh, I don't like to mess with electricity. It scares me. Don't do that either. You know, Try to have some confidence in yourself and the things you've learned and your abilities. Know what your limits are, know what you can and can't do, and don't be scared to take on those bigger, more difficult tasks that you might not have done before, but you'll get put with a team of people who have, and you'll learn something new. You'll learn a new skill that can go in your resume, and you'll learn something that you can do in the future, and then you'll be able to do it by yourself. There is no better feeling as a mechanic than when you've achieved a, a big goal. Now, typically, like I'd relate it to like my personal life with like motorcycles and stuff when you work on something and after days of working on it you finally get it running and that first start that first engine start just feels so good you get that same feeling as a mechanic the first time you're given a task you're giving something to do all on your own you go through it all on your own you figure out everything on your own you do it you're successful and everything's kosher it's very rewarding but the only way you're ever going to get that is to take that step out of your comfort zone and not be fearful of the airplane Another thing that I like to tell people who are just starting out, if you don't have a lot of experience and you don't have a lot of certificates, depending on where you're working, if you're working for an airline, if you're working for an MRO, it doesn't really matter. Um, if they offer to send you to training, take it. Now they may have you sign some sort of contract to promise that you'll stay on for a year or you have to pay that training back, whatever it may be. But if they offer to send you to training to get a certificate, whether it be like a general familiarization course, composites training, avionics training, whatever it may be, it doesn't matter. If they offer to send you to training for something specialized, take that opportunity and do that training. Every little accolade that you can throw on your resume makes you look better and better and better and gets you the chance to maybe move up in position where you're at or move to another airline, whatever it may be. Yes, people do move around a lot in aviation. There are plenty of people that jump from job to job to job. There's also plenty of people who stay in one place for 30 years, earn their, earn their retirement and clock out and go home at the end of the day, and that's fine too. But I'm saying if places offer to send you for training, take those offers. Don't be scared to go for training somewhere. Don't be scared that, oh, I'm gonna have to sign a one-year contract. One year goes by really, really fast. You blink and it's over and you're free to go do whatever you wanna do and you have that certificate in your back pockets. So don't hesitate to go to those, fact, those trainings that your boss or your company may offer. They're definitely something I would highly recommend. 
All right, everybody, that is gonna do it for this video. That was very short. It was just a couple of things I wanted to say. And now that we're here at the end of the video, I wanted to make an announcement. I am contemplating tossing around the idea of doing a giveaway and paying for somebody's written test. I haven't figured out the logistics on how I'm gonna do that, but I wanna do a Christmas giveaway and possibly pay for one or two people's written tests. Um, I'm thinking I might end up having to do something like a, like an, like a gift card of some kind. I don't know. Um, but obviously if, if you're FA or sorry, if you're in, obviously if you are in a and school and you're working towards it, you know that when you take your written test, you have to go to psiexams.com to schedule them and you pay in that portal. So I'm trying to figure out how I could do that. I don't really want to give my personal card details to somebody over the, uh, over the internet. So, but anyways, I'm contemplating the idea of throwing around, uh, putting out a give giveaway for that in the future. Um, possibly the next video or a video that's coming very soon. And I wanna get back in the swing of making videos and maybe doing some more practical projects and some more things. I've been away from the camera because I've been doing a lot of stuff now that I've taken over as the program coordinator here. I know I've said this in other videos, you've probably already clicked away. But if you found the video helpful, if you're looking forward to the giveaway, make sure you leave us a like, leave us a comment, subscribe, all of that good stuff. And as always, go build something and be easy.